13 Reasons Why Season 2 was rather disappointing. I didn't really have high hopes for it, uh, but I thought it might be interesting similar to the way the first season was. With the first season, I had a ton of problems with the way they did everything, the execution, uh, the how irresponsible they were with the topics that they were using. The show is clearly aimed at a younger audience. Well, I think it's important to talk about heavy subjects like suicide or rape or all these different things that the show tries to tackle. You have to really know what you're doing. You have to do it well, and you have to care about the people who are watching it. And it never comes across that that is ever a concern. Friends over at Nitpicks did a video about the first season of uh, 13 Reasons Why, and they, they did an outstanding job. Uh, so if you're curious about what's wrong with the first season, you should definitely go check that out. Or you can listen to the podcast we did together uh, about the first season. I was really invested into the first nine episodes, I think nine, ten episodes, but up until the point Clay's tape was played. Uh, because I felt like, oh, they're, they're going somewhere. They're going to do something really interesting with this character. And they're going to, you know, really delve into how flawed he is that you don't see. And they don't. They, they play it so safe with this character. And it's just really boring. And as soon as you realize, oh, no, they're not doing anything interesting. All the time invested feels very much wasted. So getting to season two, I had expected that this was going to be a, a show about a school shooting which not that interesting as a entertainment thing but i was kind of curious to see what they would do and honestly how they would screw that up so i was anticipating it to start off with the school shooting and then have us other 13 reasons of tapes or mp3s or notes or something along those lines of explaining why this kid did the school shooting i wasn't really upset that the show didn't follow a path that i was expecting or anticipating i'm, I'm totally fine being surprised or have my expectations subverted, whatever. That wasn't an issue at all. What the issue was, was it was dumb. When I watched the first season, I, I stayed up until three or 4 a.m. watching uh, the first nine episodes, because I was just so interested in what was happening, wanted to know, wanted to know. And in this season, I struggled to get through them. I was so bored throughout. It wasn't fun. It wasn't really interesting. Everything felt kind of contrived and forced and just, I don't know, it, it, it didn't make any sense logically. So it was just really boring to spend so much time with. So while I feel like there's a lot of things you could talk about for this season, whether it be uh, Clay turning into the super creepy guy, imagine if Hannah didn't die and he was still being so possessive over her because he liked her, but didn't like that she gave attention to other guys and started freaking out because I would almost guarantee you that's what would happen i know he got he fell in love with her more because she died and he lost his opportunity with her whatever but he became super creepy and super possessive and on like a, a scary level possessive but other issues that i had with the show was hannah being a ghost uh, alex having amnesia true man i i can't help jessica because i can't remember shit then putting forward the idea that school shooters are these kids who have been bullied and you know traumatized and this is their only resort very similar to how suicide was hannah's only resort where you you're like oh i understand how she can get to that point or i, I get why he would make those choices and what a terrible terrible message horrible to to put forward the justification for one a school shooting or two a suicide and it, it makes me angry when I think about it, when I watched it, it's very frustrating. Uh, Bryce, every time he was on screen, he was doing something evil. He gave you zero reason to like him. And the best villains are ones that you actually like and that you feel conflicted about actually liking him. I know he had a few moments where he was kind of charismatic and seemed friendly, but every time he came on screen, he was doing something borderline evil. At certain times, the show felt like a bad cop drama. When Clay and Tony go looking for Justin, it felt very much like good cop, bad cop, and them, you know, shaking people down, trying to figure things out, and it was really out of place. Again, the first season had this really interesting editing style where it was going between two different timelines to tell one story. This one had about four different timelines that it was jumping back and forth from, where you had the narrator in the court 
you had the current timeline, you had the past of them telling the story, and then you just had uh, an alternate past. For the most part, it's easy to follow, but there are certain times where I just was like, where are we in the story? Then they had this weird mystery plot that seemed very unnecessary, where people were hiding clues and leaving threatening notes and all this different stuff. And the threatening stuff made more sense, but the Polaroids made zero sense to me. Clay and Zach at times seemed like friends. Clay and Alex were definitely friends. Alex and Clay were friends. Like, I don't get why Zach was secretly passing the Polaroids, especially the way he was doing it. Each one was getting a little bit worse, a little bit worse, a little bit worse, until it was like, oh wow, Bryce is definitely a rapist. Why keep all that as a mystery? Why not give the most credible or the most revealing one, the one that is the biggest piece of evidence? Why not give that first? It seemed pretty simple. And then their willingness to try to shock you and disturb you just for the sake of doing that. I think they got a lot of publicity for how shocking the ending of the first season was where they knew, oh, we have to, we have to top that. We need to, we need to do something crazy. So people are going to get upset and talk about this show. So more people are going to be interested and more people are going to watch. That is a hundred percent what I think happened in that last scene in the bathroom with Tyler. And it, I mean, it's upsetting, but I was so mad at the creators for trying to take advantage of people in that way. To use something like that to just market their show like for how bad that is for me the most frustrating part is I think the show thinks people are just dumb I think they think their audience is just stupid they point out plot holes that they've now added to the first season because of the second season they say well that doesn't make sense why why did that happen if it was never mentioned before and they just shrug their shoulders They're like I don't know, you don't always get to know everything, so that makes sense. And the other character says, hmm, you know what, that's that's right, You're th that's a good point. And Clay is talking to Hannah and asking if she's a ghost. I think you're just working through things. Things like seeing a ghost? And other things. So you are a ghost. Okay, does it matter what you call me? I'm here. Are you here for a reason? I would think so. Or when Clay and Zach are talking together and they're talking about why didn't Hannah talk about Zach and their summer long relationship of them hooking up together. Why wasn't that in his tape? It's for her. I didn't mean to. Clay, I swear to God, it's not a lie. I'm sorry. So how come no one knew about it? You were out of town last summer. It wasn't on your tape. Did you put everything on your tape? You didn't deserve her. I know, I, I'm, I'm sorry. That should have definitely been in there. It, I don't understand why they think, oh, she was just trying to keep his privacy, try to keep a secret, and yet she's willing to expose so much other stuff. They, they wanted to go bigger in this season, so it really makes the tapes from the first season seem so small. A lot of the stuff that happened in the second season really negates a lot of the stuff in the tapes and they try to keep it consistent like oh she just for some reason didn't talk about it or didn't bring that up or didn't mention that uh she was sleeping with zach for three months or that justin stayed the night at her house the that first night that they kissed and because they in the first season they made a big deal about oh this is her first kiss and this was kind of a big crush for her and it's just dumb. But the most offensive to me was the principal and Clay having a confrontation. I don't have a lot of patience these days. So let's talk about the real issue here. You're acting out and I need to know why. I need to know what you need. Because I don't want to see somebody getting hurt with this. Somebody already has gotten hurt. And this whole thing was only the creators talking back at the people criticizing the show. Two people, but we're not allowed to talk about that. Suicide contagion is a real thing, and we've got to take measures to protect you kids. I don't understand, how does silence protect us? Kids get talking about Hannah, maybe even admiring what she did. They might think somehow that this is an answer. 
There might be a way for other kids to feel their pain, that they could live on after they die. Where on her tapes does Hannah say that? Well, whoever posted her tapes online seems to believe exactly that. Clay says, we just, we just wanted to start a conversation. No one was talking about this beforehand. That her story should go on forever. Maybe they just wanted to start a conversation. I mean, we weren't talking about these things before Hannah. Oh, of course we were. In counseling sessions, in health classes. That's not talking, that's telling. The problem is, the conversation that has now been started is about how damaging your show is to people. After the first season came out, there was a huge spike in people searching how to kill yourself on Google. There were copycats, there were people doing tapes for different things and just torturing people because they think the show was good. Have you even listened to them? The tapes? No. I was made aware of them by Mr. Porter, but we brought them directly to our attorneys. I didn't listen to them. Maybe you should. At the end of it, Clay asks the principal, did you even listen to the tapes? And the principal says, no, I, I, I heard about them, but I, I didn't watch it, or I didn't listen. And that's, that's, they're just making the assumption, oh, if you watch the show, then you'll get it. You'll understand, it'll be good. You won't be upset. It is, people got upset because they watched the show. How dumb of a response. People watched the show and they said, oh, this doesn't seem right. And then they started talking about it. And then it came out that the standards for showing a suicide on screen, the recommendations to try to help protect people were just basically thrown out the window. It didn't matter. They just wanted to do something shocking and graphic so people would talk about it but not because they want to make anything better because they want to get people to watch more of it. You know, when I was younger, I, I had a family member who committed suicide and I think a lot of people know someone who has committed suicide and it is something that just infects your soul. It latches on to you and doesn't want to let go. And for a psychology report, we, we had to pick a mental health issue and write a paper on it. And I, you know, I was torn up about the suicide. So I said, oh, well, let's, let's do that. Maybe that will help me process what's going on. Maybe that will help me to understand better. Maybe get some type of closure. I don't know, whatever. Uh, it was a terrible mistake because the more I did the research on suicide, the more I thought about it, the more thoughts of killing myself would pop into my head just out of the blue i'd be driving down the road and i would think oh i should drive into that pole or i should swallow a bunch of water while i'm swimming or whatever like just these insane thoughts and i remember getting upset with people and thinking like oh if i if i kill myself then that's gonna that'll teach them that'll show them and when i watch this stupid stupid show and they are not only putting that out but showing that it's a good thing showing that it's effective that hannah's only choice was to kill herself and for them to act like no you don't get it this isn't bad we're starting a conversation we know it's graphic but it's graphic for a point it's, it's not it's not a good point you're irresponsible and you're hurting a lot of people. Also, this scene was so stupid. If you think this is the way, if you really think this will change a goddamn thing and not just be another fucking tragedy that adults cry about for a week and then forget, if you really think that this is gonna be different, then do what you gotta do.